Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer and welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling. This channel is dedicated to the classic series of N64 wrestling games developed by Aki Corporation, which if you are unfamiliar, were WCW NW World Tour, WCW NW Revenge, Virtual Pro Wrestling 64, Virtual Pro Wrestling 2, WWF WrestleMania 2000, and WWF No Mercy. Thank you for clicking on this video, and I hope you stick around because in this video, I begin my journey through the Tag Team Championship mode in WWF No Mercy with none other than the Hardy Boys. So for these Let's Plays, I like to talk about the Aki games as well as explore the historical context of what was going on in WWE slash F circa the time No Mercy was released, which was in November of 2000. And honestly, one of the most important things to occur in the history of WWE at this time and of all time was the Hardy Boys lighting the tag team division on fire with their feud and matches against Edge and Christian, and later the Dudleys. Here I am jumping into the first match of the Tag Team Championship Series. Gotta beat Patterson and Briscoe in under three minutes, and if you're wondering why Patterson is not dressed up like Briscoe, usually he's wearing the suits just like Briscoe. It's not, well not suit, I guess I should say like, you know, button up shirt and pants it's because i did a let's play with pat patterson for the intercontinental championship and i threw a little threw a little old school attire on him so that's why it's kind of interesting too i think you know you're starting as a challenger in wwf no mercy championship and you already got to beat someone in three minutes winning a tag team match in three minutes is not easy so i'm gonna use a little shenanigans to make sure that i win this match fairly fast because i don't want to be stopped right away at the first match so anyway, I'm going to be exploring a lot of things through this tag team series. I'm very excited. You know, I'm going to be talking about the state of the WWE tag team division then and now. I'm going to be highlighting key tag teams and moments. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the differences between the WWF slash E world tag team title and the WWE tag team championship, which is the current raw tag team championship. You know, and the SmackDown Tag Team Championship and all the other Tag Team Championships in between because championships are important to me. Titles are important to me. And the 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 thing that happened with the World ta Tag Title being retired and now we have the WWE Tag Title and the New Day, you know, they broke Demolition's record, but really they didn't. There's a lot of things I'm going to get into about that throughout this series because... A lot of these times, a lot of times, I'm gonna be talking about championship matches, so you'll hear me harp on that quite a bit. Uh, the, I'm gonna be talking about the mode itself and how, honestly, this tag team championship mode in WWF No Mercy is my least favorite mode of all the championship paths I've done so far. I've done the light heavyweight, I've done the European Championship. And I've done the Hardcore Championship and the Intercontinental Championship. I got the Women's Championship and the World Championship to do after this one. There I go, hitting the twist of fate on Gerald Briscoe. Pat Patterson's on the outside. I'm going to give a uh, little swing over to Pat Patterson so Briscoe can be hit. Swing it into the twist of fate. See what I did there? How I sent him over so he could knock Patterson and then hit him with the twist of fate. Going for the... Uh, count uh, the Irish whip special right into the twist of fate that's a little cheesy way to make sure you win these tag team matches you know cheesy way really there's no honor in that there's no honor in exploiting the weakness of the AI but that's how you got to win these matches under three minutes you know you got to do what you got to do uh oh super heavyweight look I'm coming up against the Hollies I'm gonna talk about them later on in the championship series but you know I'm gonna be talking about so much so why the Hardy Boys why did I start with the Hardy Boys you know the real-life brothers the only real-life brothers that I would be playing in this mode um, well they just made their return to the WWE after eight years and they won the raw tag team championship title in a four-way ladder match at WrestleMania full disclosure you know I've been gone I've been gone for a few months let's talk about it I've been gone for a few months I disappeared I was on a good schedule, uploading stuff in the summer and the fall, and then boom, I disappear. And I had recorded the video for this tag team championship path uh, pretty sporadically throughout. And 
I was trying so hard to get back into the groove of things because I had a feeling the Hardys were going to come back. And when WrestleMania 33 rolled around, I was kicking myself because I was like, man, how awesome would it have been if I did the Tag Team Championship Let's Play series when I was originally supposed to? And then I talked about how, I guarantee it, guys, the Hardys are going to show up. And then they do show up. You know, I had a feeling they weren't going to renew with Impact Wrestling. Um, and the, But the way they showed up, the circumstances they showed up, I couldn't predict. I don't think anyone predicted. I mean, we all had a feeling as we got closer to WrestleMania. That was definitely my favorite moment of WrestleMania 33 when the Hardys showed up. And the way they did it, introducing them into the uh, title match all of a sudden. You know, and the night before, the Hardys were wrestling the, uh, the Young Bucks for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Um, that they procured from their expedition of gold, you know, Broken Matt Hardy. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about Broken Matt Hardy for a little bit. But, yeah, you know, they wrestled for 30 minutes at a ladder match. And then, you know, everyone's saying, oh, are they going to show up at WrestleMania? Because they, they're going to do that Ring of Honor ladder match. And sure enough, they did into another ladder match. I mean, the Hardy Boys, they're just awesome. They're just awesome. They won the Tag Team Championship becoming seven-time WWE Tag Team Champions. That's how we talk about it now because technically they're six-time World Tag Team Champions and one-time Raw Tag Team Champions. It's two different belts. It's two different belts. I'm not going to get too heated about it now, but <laughs> you'll definitely hear me talk about it later on. Here I go. I got Hardcore Holly onto the tables going a little extreme for team extreme and i chose matt hardy because honestly i don't know i've always been a fan of matt hardy i'm not trying to jump on the broken matt hardy bandwagon i really have been you know even when they first split up i was team matt hardy and then the whole thing with lita and edge oh man you better believe i was team matt hardy um you know i've always been a fan of jeff too but even back in the day when No Mercy first came out, I was picking Matt Hardy over Jeff Hardy. Um, but, you know, the WWF Tag Team Champions seven times. Other Tag Team Championships they've won. They've won the WCW Tag Team Championship while it was under WWE. The TNA World Tag Team Championship two times. And the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship one time. And in the year 2000 for Pro Wrestling Illustrated, they were voted Match of the Year against... The Dullies, Edge and Christian in the triangle ladder match at WrestleMania 2000. And here we go. This storyline is kind of following the triangle ladder match. So it's very, it's very you know, poignant that I'm bringing this up now. Here we go. I got to do a, a, a match, a ladder match with the Dudleys, you know, to, to go against Edge and Christian. They have got match of the year by Pro Wrestling Illustrated twice. WrestleMania 2000 and WrestleMania 17, TLC 1. And tag team of the year, year 2000. So, you know, around the year 2000, it was a tag team renaissance by these three teams. The Hardys, Edge and Christian, and the Dudleys. And so something new that I want to try for these Let's Play series is I want to have subtitles. A little sub-theme for each series. And for this video, for this theme, for talking about the Hardy Boys, I'm calling it How to Build a Great Tag Team Division Part 1. I'm sure you can figure out who parts two and three belong to. One of them is in the ring right now against the Hardys. But, you know, it all started. It all started at No Mercy 1999. The pay-per-view that this game got its name from and the logo and the set. No Mercy 1999. The Hardy Boys, Edge and Christian, Ladder Match, the Terry Invitational Tournament. And that's where it all began, really, for me, at least personally. That's where I think it all began, you know, for the Hardys to get catapulted to that level of being taken seriously as a, a, a top tag team in the WWE. We're going to talk about that journey. We're going to talk about, you know, as we look back, the tag team division hasn't really peaked as high as it did. You know, right around this time, going from WrestleMania 2000 to WrestleMania 17, even, even you know, if we're going to start at No Mercy, you know, and why? Why is that? Why, why have we not reached that level of success with other tag teams? Was it because of all the spots the Hardy Boys were doing? Was it the chemistry between those three teams? You just can't repeat chemistry like that. 
doesn't have to do with the writing doesn't have to do with what fans expect from tag team matches we're gonna talk about a little bit of that here you know I'm gonna focus on the time from you know the low no mercy ladder match until TLC 2 and I'll talk a little bit about what happens afterwards but you know before I get into the past you know I I have to mention you know that the Hardys coming into the WWE now they're coming into the WWE they're the hot they were the hottest thing outside of the Bullet Club you know in non WWE wrestling world you know I watch a lot of wrestling outside of WWE a lot of New Japan independent stuff Ring of Honor a little bit of Lucha Underground. It's on Netflix now. Go watch it. And Broken Matt Hardy, you know, which he began in TNA while chasing the world championship and feuding with Jeff Hardy, uh, it revitalized the Hardys. It, it got it got people talking about them again. You know, they were wrestling already. They were around, but it was it was there that you know with the broken gimmick. You can't explain the broken gimmick to someone, and I think that's kind of the beauty of it. You know, and even like long-term wrestling fans who, before the Hardys showed them WWE, I would tell them like, oh, have you seen what Matt Hardy's doing lately with the broken gimmick and the final deletion? And it's hard to explain because he, he talks in a different language and he has his own rhythm, his own accent, and it's hysterical. But at the same time, it works. It works for wrestling. And I bring that up now because you're going to see as we go through the storyline of the Hardys, Edge and Christian and the Dudleys and seeing how the Hardys came up, they took a lot of creative risks with the matches they did. And right now the Hardy Boys, you know, they haven't yet in, you know, incorporated into the WWE. There's a little bit of issues with like the rights and lawsuits being thrown around and this and that. Uh, so it's probably more complicated than we are aware of. But he took a big risk creatively and to survive for a long time in pro wrestling is to always be reinventing yourself whether it's small subtle changes over time or big dramatic changes and I hope they bring the broken gimmick to the WWE because it's so forward thinking it's so creative and it shows how passionate Matt Hardy is about wrestling and Jeff Hardy too Jeff Hardy's always been one to have these you know avant-garde personas and even when they talk about in like their various wrestling documentaries that they have on them about you know willow and all these characters they had growing up you know they always had a very out there mindset when it comes to wrestling and i think a lot of that creative you know genius you know i mean honestly really that they have uh, works their way into their matches. Just wa re-watching a lot of their TLC matches and ladder matches and the spots at that time, no one was doing that stuff. You know, yeah, you know, we had a ladder match here or there with a few people, you know, Sean and Razor Ramon or Triple H and The Rock, but the stuff they were doing, the four of them, the six of them, it was so creative, and I think... That's part of the success to building any division, any great storyline in wrestling is you need to be creative. You need to think outside the box. At that time, being extreme for WWE was thinking outside of the box. You know, yeah, ECW was doing it, but for to see it in the tag team divisions, to see it with these guys, um, that was thinking outside of the box. So I'll, I'm very interested to see what they do with the Hardys back in the WWE because I think the nostalgia is going to run out very quickly and hopefully they do something right now they're feuding with Cesaro and Sheamus and Cesaro and Sheamus turned on them so hopefully this might lead into the broken storyline hopefully they might do something to the Hardys that leads into Matt Hardy being broken or maybe they'll do something different maybe they'll take that broken gimmick and make it into something else to, to, to create something new because you know, you can't just keep repeating the same stuff over and over. We can't just see the Hardys in ladder matches and TLC matches all the time, especially now at this age, you know. So let's let's look back. Let's take a look back when the Hardys came in before No Mercy 99. They first joined WWE in 98. They were enhancement talent, to put it politely. But eventually, it would build momentum as a young, hardworking tag team. Very exciting, very dynamic to watch in the ring. And they started being managed by Hall of Famer Michael Hayes, who, you know, as we all know, fabulous Freebirds. And we can draw a lot of comparison already with the Hardys 
coming up being managed by Michael Hayes because I want to point out how important managers are to the success of either a new team or new wrestler. You look at the Authors of Pain in NXT. Authors of Pain in NXT, they got Paul Ellering right now. Both Hall of Famers, Ellering and Hayes. Both part of successful tag teams, the Freebirds and the Warriors. Both working with young and up and coming tag teams. I miss managers so much. When I saw Michael Hayes come out with the Hardys, I, I you know, it warmed my heart because I think that's such a lost breed having managers. WWE, they don't do managers a lot. You got Paul Heyman and, and on the main roster, but that's it. Who else? Who else is a, ma a notable manager in the WWE? There's no one. In NXT, at least we got Paul Ellering for the, uh, you know, for the Authors of Pain. But I want more. I want more because I don't know if the Hardys would have been taken seriously right off the bat because we've seen them lose so much so it creates a natural storyline we've seen these guys over and over again on like saturday morning wrestling you know sunday night heat which, you know shotgun saturday night wherever they were losing all the time to some episodes of raw but we noticed that they would always lose because they look like knockoff rockers right it's like oh there's those young guys who always lose and then all of a sudden you got michael hayes taking them under the ring and it creates this natural storyline oh huh Maybe he sees something in them, you know, and that that creates that relate that gives the audience something to grab onto when you have a successful wrestler take a, a no name wrestler under their wing, you know, it, it clues you in like, oh, maybe I should pay attention to these guys, you know, think of think of some of the most memorable tag teams in the history, you know, they they a lot of them had great managers, you had Captain Lou Albano. With the Head Shrinkers and the Bulldogs. He had Jimmy Hart with the Hart Foundation. Jim Cornette, Midnight Express, Bobby Heenan, and all the teams he managed. You could even say J.J. Dillon with the Four Horsemen. Even though, you know, it's four people. You still had Ole and Arn as a tag team. Uh, you know, and J.J. Dillon rolled around with them. So, you know, they won their first tag team. The Hardys, they won their first tag team in an upset against the Acolytes, a.k.a. the APA, on an episode of Raw. On January, on June 29th, 1999, and they, but they would lose it quickly back to the Acolytes at fully loaded 99. I bring this up because this was a handicap match, Freebirds rule, you know, which is something the New Day used a lot. But Michael Hayes inserted himself into the match. Uh, they still lost the three of them because <laughs> what's Michael Hayes gonna do? Come on! But it was held at the Marine Midland Stadium in Buffalo, New York, where I'm currently recording out of. <laughs> so. Their relationship with Hayes didn't last too long because eventually they would leave and join Gangrel to form the new Brood. And if you all know, you should know, Brood, Edge and Christian with Gangrel, that was a uh, stable you had going, but there was some, you know, tension there and Gangrel turned on them and then he got the Hardy Boys to turn on Michael Hayes. WrestleMania 2000 has Edge and Christian in the Brood gimmick and the Hardys in sort of their, you know, Michael Hayes gimmick. So in WrestleMania 2000, I would try to, ch I would change the music for the Hardys into the Brood so that they could come out at the Brood entrance like Edge and Christian. It was really cool because if you just change the entrances and stuff, they, they change how they come in and things like that. So that was always really cool. Um, but that was where the beginnings of the Edge and Christian and Hardy feud Happen and you know we got him in the ring right now. This match is going running a little long I'm trying to showboat a little bit It's not really working out too much here. I am as Jeff So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to do the twist of fate and I'm gonna try to run get a swanton bomb off Because we got to get a swanton boom Love it swanton bomb was actually introduced in the Aki series in this game in WrestleMania 2000 They didn't have the swanton bomb as it is now with the guy lying on the ground. They had it standing up because great Sasuke he had it in virtual pro wrestling 64 so they kept it for WrestleMania 2000 gave it a Jeff Jeff still has it but he does it standing up he might also do it standing up in this game I don't know I don't know if I tried it um, but he has he does have the animation how he always does it with the opponent lying on the ground and I love it it's one of the coolest additions to WF no mercy is the Swanton Bomb. Like, who didn't have the Swanton Bomb in their created wrestler's moveset? Everyone did it. You know, jump off the ladder, 
with the Swanton Bomb. Ladder matches were also introduced in WWF No Mercy. You know, just like how the ladder match between Edge and Christian, you know, the rest they say was history when that happened. So, you know, let's look at the let's look at the tag team division before the Hardys. You know, let's look at just let's just go back to WrestleMania 15 really quick because the Hardy Boys were at WrestleMania 15, sort of. They were part of a battle royal that aired on Heat to determine the number one contender that would face the current tag team champions at that time, Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart. Right? This was literally right before the pay per view. They're deciding who the number one contenders are gonna be, and then the second match of the night is the tag team championship match ended up being Test and D'Lo Brown winning. And they still lose. They lose to Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart. So you do this whole thing where you have this battle royal. Oh, yeah, we'll give someone a shot. Whatever. And, and it's a battle royal, too. It's like, how can you even take his... I don't, I'm not a fan of tag team battle royals. I think they're kind of silly. Um, and that's pretty much where the tag team division was. Just one year prior, you know, in WrestleMania 15, there weren't really tag teams. You know, you had Public Enemy was in the battle royal, but we all know Public Enemy's history in the WWE didn't really go as smoothly as they would like. Viscera and Midian, who, let's be honest, no one ever took Viscera and Midian serious as a tag team. 8-Ball and Skull, you know, Hawk and Animal were in it. Hawk and Animal, you know, LOD, legendary tag team, but they were definitely in the twilight of their career at this time. Scott Taylor and Brian Christopher, who were too much, yet to become too cool. You had the Acolytes, who were probably the most notable and intimidating tag team in that Battle Royal. Uh, I believe the Godfather and Steve Blackman were a tag team. Uh, D'Lo Brown and Tess. And then Gilbert was in it for some reason. I don't even know if Gilbert actually had a partner. You know, so I like to look at it before the Hardys. There weren't really any tag teams. Yeah, you could say Jeff Jarrett and Owen Hart. Uh, obviously, New Age Outlaws were a big deal for a year or two before the Hardys got on the map. But I'll talk about that more when I do the New Age Outlaws as part of the Championship Let's Play series. Because they're definitely in there. I'm definitely going to do them. Um, I'll talk about more how, you know, again, when they had the Tag Team Championship, it was more so of a prop as opposed to them, you know, revitalizing the division. And a lot of the matches they won, they won because of shenanigans. They won because of cheating. They won because of DX. You know what I mean? So... No Mercy October 99 was the beginning when you had a best of five between Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy and Edge and Christian feuding because the brood are angry at Gangrel. Gangrel are using the Hardys to go after them. All of a sudden they have like this best of five over the episodes of Raw culminating to No Mercy. But also they added an extra stipulation that you won $100,000 in the managerial services of Terry if you won that ladder match. So they, they were trying to add some sort of importance to this ladder match that kind of came out, came out of the blue. And I think that's the beauty of it. I think that was the beauty of, you know, the Hardy Boys is that you can't really see them coming until all of a sudden, bam, they're jumping off the ladders and them and Edge and Christian are putting on this amazing match. And you're like, hold up, what's going on here? This is amazing. Who are these people? So here we go. So I'm going to fast forward here. Let's go. Let's fast forward. <laughs> I don't, this is what I was going to talk about. I mentioned about the beginning of the video. I don't like playing single matches, or in this case, this is a handicap match, but I don't play like playing as just one half of the tag team partner in a tag team championship mode. And I get a little annoyed by it because there are some paths, and you'll see it later on in some of my other Let's Plays, where a majority of the matches are single player matches. It's like, come on, guys. I get that no mercy for the championship path. They were trying to go for the storylines, but I don't know. I, I, you know, I'm doing a championship for the tag team. Let me just play as tag teams. You know, let me do it how it was like in WCW NW Revenge where you're just playing tag team matches if you're doing the tag team championship. And considering that the chapters are kind of long, you do 10 chapters for the no mercy, which is, you know, the longest all any of the paths go. I think it's tied with the World Championship. I mean, World Championship has 10 as well. 
you know, it's pretty long. And to, to think that you're just going to have tag team matches over and over again. And then to get a handicap match with APA, it's like that doesn't make it unique. Because you have those kinds of matches in the other in the other championship paths. So it kind of bugs me. So for this Let's Play series, I'm going to fast forward those single player matches. Because honestly, nothing goes on. We're here for the tag team matches. Um, but speaking of ladder matches, so let's go back to that ladder match. It was the first tag team ladder match that WWE ever did. Okay, so there's a first. First tag team ladder match that WWE ever did. Obviously, they had a few other pay-per-view ladder matches, but they were all single matches. And there was one handicap match with Vince and Shane against Stone Cold, I believe. Um, and the Hardys, you know, the Hardys, when I was doing research, they've only been in six ladder matches as a tag team. They've been in other ladder matches individually. But as the Hardy Boys tag team, they've only been in six. And, uh, you know, four of them, well, three of them, you, know, you don't count TLC. We'll get into that. But <laughs> three of them happened all around this time. So you had No Mercy 99 versus Edge and Christian, WrestleMania 2000, which was a ladder match against the Dudleys and Edge and Christian. And then the episode of Raw, September 25th, 2000, the, versus Edge and Christian. We'll talk about that in a bit. Armageddon 06 with it was a four-way with uh, Brian Kendrick and Paul London Steven Regal and Dave Taylor and Eminem remember Eminem? Eminem? Oh, so hard to say and then one night stand against Benjamin Haas that was a good match too both the Armageddon 06 match and the one night stand match is really good I'm not gonna talk too much about it in this video but go see those matches those are really good ladder matches with the Hardys and then WrestleMania 33, so six ladder matches, and we kind of know them for you know being in these tag team matches, uh, and their their record isn't great. It's like 50-50. No, it's more than 50-50. They won. They lost. Okay, so they lost one of them. They lost two of them, and they won the other four. All right, that's pretty good. That's a good record. It's a good record. It's better than my record. I've won zero ladder matches <laughs> in real life. Um, so, and they were technically bad guys in the ladder match for No Mercy. They were technically the heels because they were with the brood. But, you know, after the match, the Hardys win. Jeff Hardy falls off the ladder. You know, and that's the animation they use in No Mercy. That's Jeff Hardy falling off the ladder. So it's very apropos when you play as the Hardy Boys. But when you play as anyone else, they still use that animation. It's very funny. And to watch the audience, to rewatch the audience reaction... It's almost like it comes in later. The match comes in later in the night. The fans are already going crazy. You have the Jeff Jarrett China match was blowing the roof off the place. To watch the fans' reaction, it's like this slow build where they're like watching it, watching it, and like fighting, and then they start instituting ladders, and the crowd's like, oh, ooh, yeah, oh. But then it gets quiet after those responses. It gets quiet, and then like something happens, like, oh, and then they get quiet again. And then all of a sudden, it just starts getting louder and louder, and they're clapping and cheering. You know, if this was today, halfway through the match, you'd hear, this is awesome. You know, they would say, holy shit, you know, all this stuff. They'd be like saying all this, they'd probably still be chanting ECW because people can't let it go. <laughs> but they'd be saying all this stuff. But back then, you know, I really feel like the audience didn't know how to respond. They're like, they were into it. They were focused. They were like, what's happening? And what was great is that there's a moment where, like, all of a sudden, everyone's standing up. You don't see that enough anymore. Can I just say that? You don't see people standing up on the camera side. It's always like the people in the camera side now, they always look bored. But maybe that says something about the wrestling. But they all of a sudden, they're standing up. They want to see what happens next. But it wasn't like a rocket ship to the top, you know? It wasn't. And this is what I'm talking about, building a tag team division. Just because you had this amazing match that kind of came out of nowhere, it's not like they could have just thrown out all their plans and say, all right, all of a sudden, let's put the belts on the Hardys and let's make it all about the Hardys. I don't even think WWE knew what to expect from that match. They just knew they were giving these guys time to go out there, get famous. And if you succeed, great. We'll work it out. If you don't, all right, back of the line. Who's next? Who else is going to step up to the plate? And the Hardys, you know, they've talked about it over and over. They were hungry. So you need guys who are hungry to steal the show. And you need guys who are willing to think outside the box and be creative. N nowadays, you know, doing high-risk spots and ladder matches, it's kind of, we're used to it. So unless you do something really inventive 
or unless you get us involved really emotionally or you do something crazy like Kalisto did when he did the silly little soul <laughs> off, off the top of the ladder you know you, you, you need you need to invest us into what you're doing in order to to have us care about you all of a sudden and that's what the Hardys did you know they were they were nobodies and Edge and Christian too they were nobodies and they put their bodies on the line and just when you think the match is over they keep going and I think that's when really everyone got it excited because they were watching this match it looked like it was about to end and then they all fall off the ladder again and everyone's like wait this is gonna keep going on isn't it this is amazing uh, but it wasn't a rocket ship to the top. You know, the tag team division at that time was revolving around the Rock and Sock Connection, who I will be doing a Let's Play series for in this tag team division, uh, tag team championship path. Um, they competed at No Mercy, but they were in separate matches and singles matches. You know, and then the next night on Raw, the Hollies would win the tag team championships because it's all about the feud between how the Rock and Mick Foley, you know, the odd couple, they can't get along. And then the Hollies would lose to Mankind and Al Snow, which is still sort of involved with the Rock and Sock Connection storyline, who would lose the titles to the New Age Outlaws, who the New Age Outlaws originally lost the titles to Rock and Sock. And all these title cha changes were happening on Raw and SmackDown because the focus wasn't on the tag team titles. The focus was on the Rock and Sock, building the Rock and Sock. And, you know, that was a great build. It was, but the tag team championships only being used as props and here we go on the flip side you got the Hardys and Edge and Christian throwing ladders around saying hey look at us maybe you can build a tag team division around us you know at Survivor Series they were involved in the classic Survivor Series match so they didn't really do anything there and Armageddon there was another tag team turmoil battle royal and the APA ended up winning that they were still known as the Acolytes but the APA won that because I think WWE saw, wait a minute, all right, the Hardys, they just put on that match with Edge and Christian, and we just got the Dudleys. Because the Dudleys come in right around that time, and I think that's where the wheels started turning. It's like, oh, now we got the Dudleys. We could do something here. And at Royal Rumble 2000, that's where you got the Hardys against the Dudleys in a tables match. No title. The tag team title would be defended later on in a squash match. When the New Age Outlaws beat the Acolytes in like less than two seconds, they don't like, you know, destroy them, but they just steal a win. But it was like a super fast match. And here we go again in the beginning of the night. You got the Dudleys and the Hardys putting on a great tables match, you know. So you have two things happening there. You have uh, hot tag teams rising up but they're not involved with the tag team championship so what do you do well you got to put the belt on one of them that's what i would do and that's what wwe did and eventually the titles would go to the dudleys as they would beat the new age outlaws and no way out and this would set up wrestlemania so it wasn't instant it wasn't instant we like to i don't know i don't know me personally i remember is it being instant oh yeah they had the ladder match and then it was tlc but looking back on it you know, they had to be very careful about it. They didn't want to rush it, and they wanted to make sure that they could do it again. And what bigger stage to do it again? Here I am. I'm going to skip this Dean Malenko match. Like, why am I fighting Dean Malenko? This is like something you would see in the light heavyweight championship path, which is probably did happen because I did a light heavyweight championship path with both these guys. Check those out. My light heavyweight. That's OG Be Better Game of Wrestling with Matt Hardy and Dean Malenko, light heavyweight. But it doesn't seem unique here because it's like I'm supposed to be doing tag. Why don't I just do a tag team match with Matt and Jeff Hardy against Dean Malenko and Perry Saturn? Why didn't we do Radicals and the Hardys? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we get to the WrestleMania 2000, which is a triangle match, triangle ladder match, first of its kind. Uh, it was technically a TLC match, but you know we'll talk about it a bit. And it stole the show, and I think it's one of the most memorable WrestleMania matches from the Attitude Era. It's definitely. A match that put all three of them on the map and it's a match we still all talk about as being uh, you know a quintessential Wrestlemania moment and it because it was so different it was so new it was also you know, way better than a lot of the stuff on the card here's another handicap match against Al Snow and Steve Blackman that I'm gonna skip through you know we're gonna need the time because next up <laughs> it's, uh, it's gonna be quite a long match and I'll tell you why um, but yeah so 
you have lightning in the bottle now. You just have this amazing triangle ladder match that will forever be remembered. And it's only the beginning. You know, a lot of times people think that WrestleMania, that's where you end the feuds. And honestly, I always like to say, you know, WrestleMania is a great time to begin feuds. And I always use the example of the Hardys, Edge and Christian, the Dudleys, because that was just the beginning. We only had one ladder match between the Hardys and Edge and Christian, one tables match between the Hardys and Edge and, and the Dudleys. Edge and Christian hadn't really had any big matches with the Dudley boys yet. So now we have the triangle ladder match. Let's get this ball rolling. Let's raise the stakes. Now the championship is in the picture. So now it means more that these guys are fighting. And that's why I think titles are a very important thing. You know, you look at the New Day. And shout out to Austin Creed. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, Xavier Woods. I have a great Xavier Woods story I got to tell for this channel. I met him. I got to play video games with him. It was awesome. And I love the New Day. Don't get me wrong. I love the New Day. But something that kind of bugged me about the latter half of the New Day's Tag Team Championship run was that they had the titles, but they didn't feel like champions because the stakes weren't high, you know? Yeah, they were going after the streak and holding it on for a long time, but, you know, it's because, honestly, they weren't defending it quite a bit. You know, it, and that's how I felt with the New Age Outlaws. New Age Outlaws was the same way, you know? Their, their, their championship defenses didn't really mean all that much. But is that a problem? Is that because of the team? No, that's not because of the team. That's not because the New Day is a bad tag team or the New Age Outlaws are a bad tag team. They're not. It's because of how you set up the championship in the storyline that you're writing. And now that we had this triangle ladder match, first of its kind, WrestleMania, they pulled out all the stops, they wowed everyone. And then you see Edge and Christian grab those titles. So now Edge and Christian are the best. Now the titles mean something because the titles wasn't just a prop being passed around. It wasn't hurt feelings between Rock and Sock. It was three teams going out there and trying to steal the show, you know. And and I feel like I feel like that's missing. At least in WWE proper, that's missing. NXT does it very well with their titles, and especially I love the tag team division in NXT. And even they reinvigorated the tag team division scene in WWE because when they started doing the Dusty Classic and you started seeing teams like the Revival come up, like, uh, you know, Chad Gable and Justin Jordan, um, you know, eventually we would get the Authors of Pain, eventually we would get DIY, and you would see all these tag teams. It was awesome. It put a focus on the wrestling, on the matches, on the stories being told in the ring. And honestly, my personal opinion, which is why I was really looking forward to this Tag Team Championship Let's Play, Let's Play series, is Tag Team Wrestling is a completely different art form than singles wrestling. And for me, I think a really good Tag Team feud fulfills me and satisfies me more as a wrestling fan than a really good singles feud. Because when you get those high stakes championship tag team matches where everything's on the line, you have so many more people and devices that you could use to capitalize on the drama. And that's what TLC1 was. That's what the ladder match was. And they rode that, they rode that drama throughout, you know, after TLC1. You know, the Hardys began to chase the tag team championships, you know, and Edge and Christian, they became these great tag team heels because it all focused on how they would keep winning either through cheating or just beating guys. You know, they would have a brief feud with Too Cool where Too Cool would win the belts from them, but then they would win it back and the Hardys would try to beat them and they couldn't beat them even fair and square or sometimes when Edge and Christian would get really desperate, they would cheat, you know. It, it added a level of drama and it wasn't about, oh, you know, I mean, stuff like this wouldn't happen later on with Edge and Matt Hardy, but like, oh, you stole my girlfriend or, oh, you said this to me and hurt my feelings or we used to be, be best friends. You know, the Hardy boys, Edge and Christian, they, they yeah, they the brood angle sort of like put them on a weird personal feud, but then it just became about the matches. Then it just became about 
who's better than who. And I love that. I especially love that with tag team wrestling, you know. So, yeah, you would have all these shenanigans with Edge and Christian uh, and the Hardy Boys. Hardy Boys chasing after them. And Edge and Christian always managed to seem how to, you know, figure out a way to win. And it was always very frustrating. And that's what made them good heels. You need, you need a good heel. You need a good baby face to, to make a good division. You know what I mean? If everyone's all gray, you know, I, I really feel like it doesn't create any diversity in the characters. And you don't really know who you should root for. You just root for whoever's the coolest. And I hate that. I hate just rooting for a wrestler because he's supposed to be cool. I want to root for someone because either they're good or they're bad. And they're justified in being good and justified in being bad. You know, and they walk that fine line even though everyone's using ladders and tables and chairs. Oh my. Um, it was very clear that the Hardy Boys were good guys. Because they didn't do anything, you know, they didn't play dirty. They didn't play unfair. You know, th that was for Edge and Christian. That was for the Dudleys. They were the ones who would take it to the next level. The Hardys would meet them when they were pushed to it. Because it's not like they were any slouches when it came to the ladders and the chairs and the tables. But, you know, they weren't cheating to survive. You know, and that's what, that's what also makes a good feud. And because now you have these three teams making the spotlight and these three teams being important when other teams challenge them they get noticed too so around this time you know like we were talking about wrestlemania 15 there wasn't really a lot of great tag teams you started to see more tag teams come about too cool was becoming popular the hollies were wrestling a lot as a tag team you had right to censor coming about with Buchanan and Godfather and even, you know, TNA, Test and Albert. And that was a big deal too with TNA because they had Trish and the Hardys had Lita. Again, now, I wouldn't necessarily call Lita a manager, but, you know, having that third option, you know, Team Extreme is what they called themselves, I think helped the Hardy Boys and... Did they need it? I don't know. It's hard to say because they always pretty much had Lita almost from the get-go after they dropped Terry. Um, the Edge and Christian didn't need a third person. Dudleys didn't need a third person. But eventually they would get Rhino for Edge and Christian. And then the Dudleys, they would bring in Spike Dudley when he jo joined over from ECW. And it's great to have just that one extra dynamic sometimes for tag teams. Because again, it raises the stakes. So, you know, and, and that's what would eventually see in TLC 2. But let me talk about TLC 1 real quick because you go No Mercy, which is the ladder match, Royal Rumble, which is the tables match, WrestleMania 2000, which is the triangle ladder match, and then SummerSlam is basically the rematch from WrestleMania 2000. But instead of calling it a triangle ladder match, they call it TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. That's because the Hardys, their specialty was ladders, Dudley's specialty was tables. And the specialty of Edge and Christian were chairs. They were doing the concerto, which is, looked so brutal. So SummerSlam was TLC1, another excellent match. A match everyone was like, how are they going to top the triangle ladder match? They do. It's great. They kill it. Edge and Christian win again, <laughs> which is really funny. Uh, and then that would lead into the Unforgiven cage match, where the Hardy Boys would finally win their second tag team championship and I think that's great because so you have Unforgiven they would win the cage match the next night there'll be another ladder match with the with the Edge and Christian and then Edge and Christian would do the thing where they would dress up as the conquistadors steal the belts from the Hardys but then the Hardys would win it back but then the Hardys would lose it to right to censor so you always had the Hardys chasing and then when they finally had that moment up oh, you take it away you don't let them have it too long because I think the baby face always has to chase. And the Hardys were great at chasing because they were beatable. They were beatable champions. You know, they, again, they didn't cheat. Here I go. I'm going. I was going to go for the Swanton Bond. So the whole time I'm trying to win this match because it is the last match. I'm trying to win it with Jeff Hardy and the Swanton Bond. <laughs> so that's why this match goes on for a really long time in case you're wondering it's like man he could have won this match a while ago and eventually spoiler i'll give up I'll, I'll like you know what i'm not gonna it's not gonna happen it's not in the cards it starts getting a little bit difficult because i believe the ai is on expert 
in this match. And you know, normally I don't have a problem with expert. It's just that you know, the longer you grow on, you 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 have a match going on, um, the more the odds stack up against you. Because eventually Triple H gets a comeback special meter, then Xbox gets a comeback special meter, and it becomes very frustrating when I'm trying to get them to lay down to take a Swanton bomb. They're just not doing it. But what else can I expect from the game? Uh, <laughs> And it's interesting that you they have the game and X-Pop end this feud. Somehow, some way, they still managed to make this ch tag team championship let's play, you know, not let's play, but championship path come back around to the authority, to, to, to McMahon, Helmsley, to Triple H and X-Pop, you know, Triple H and a DX member, uh, which I thought was kind of, I don't know, weird, because again, Maybe even when the developers were developing this game, at this time, they really didn't know how else, like, what other storylines we got. All we really know about is the Hardys, because there's nothing really else going on with the tag team. And you need, you need more players. You need, you need more people involved to build a great tag team division. So, as much as I like to look back at the tag team division, all we really got from it were the Hardy Boys. And yeah, we remember the Hollies. We remember, you know right to censor remember all these guys but you know we don't keep them on the same level as the hardys the dudleys and edge and christian a few years later we would get great tag team matches again in smackdown because of like Ango and benoit and jericho and guerrero all these guys teaming up forming tag teams Rey mysterio chavo guerrero um but they weren't tag teams as like the hardys were i'm a sucker for like tag teams that like you look at them and you can tell they're a tag team. Whether they're dressed the same, whether they have the same name, whether they just have like a similar background, you know, like, you know, Jordan and Gable. You know, they're basically like, you know, you split Kurt Angle, Kurt Angle in half and you get one half is Chad Gable, one half is Justin Jordan. You know what I mean? The authors of pain. You know, it's they're a tag team. You can't see them by themselves. At the time, the Hardys, you couldn't see them by themselves. Eventually, they would have great singles careers, both Jeff and Matt. Um, Edge and Christian, you know, they would have great singles careers too, but at the time, you saw them only as a tag team, you know what I mean? Cesaro and Sheamus, it's interesting because I feel like they're coming into their own now as a tag team, but I don't see a lot of longevity there, even for them. Uh, Anderson and Gallows, that's a tag team. You know, the New Day, that's a tag team. Um, guys who are just put together, I don't really consider those tag teams. Yeah, they might be involved in great tag team matches, such as, you know, Guerrero and Rey Mysterio and, and those guys. But, you know, when I think of tag teams, I like to see them match in some sort of way. I don't know, it's weird. It's an old school way of thinking about it, but... That's just how I view the tag teams. And when we got to TLC2, you know, at WrestleMania 17, again, it was like now they have to top everything that came before it. So you're always raising the bar. You're always putting your guys in a position to outdo themselves. And I don't know when's the last time I can say we saw that in the WWE with tag teams. You know what I mean? We've had moments with tag teams do like have good matches, but you know, I think back when the Usos were feuding with the Wyatt family, and we had like three mat, three pay per views in a row. Like the first two pay per views, they were like on the pre show, but they gave like these great matches. And then the third pay per view, they finally made it to the pay per view proper, and they had this amazing two out of three falls match, and then it went nowhere. You know, or the TLC match. When Kalisto, you know, the Lucha Dragons, they had that epic moment. Uh, then it went nowhere. You know what I mean? It's like it, you have to let them keep raising the bar. Like, okay, now, you know, do something better than that. Oh, the No Mercy ladder match? That was great. All right, now there's three of you. Top it. Oh, okay. Top it again. Same match. Go. Top it again. Can you do it in a cage? Can you do it in a ladder match on Raw? No pay-per-view next night. Can you do it? Can you do another one? TLC2. And we're going to throw in three more people. Because in TLC2, they had Spike Dudley come out, Rhino come out, and Lita come out. And it was great. And they always managed to rise to the occasion. I think what's missing from 
WWE storytelling with, you know, the tag team proper on Raw and on SmackDown is that you don't see this natural progression. A team would win, and then they'll lose the next week. They'll win the championship. They'll hold on to it. You won't really see them defend it against anyone important because they're just defending it against the same people, and then they would lose it back. You know, that, that you know what they say, 50-50 booking. Um, NXT is different because NXT, I feel like they managed to cap, you know, just look at the, the Revival versus DIY. There was a reason why the Revival versus DIY, two out of three falls, everyone was like, this is the match of the year. It's not because they had one match and it was all said and done. It's because it was the build-up to that match. They kept topping themselves over and over again. And now you have DIY entering a ladder match with the Authors of Pain. They keep building on the previous encounters. They keep building on what has happened before to give them time. You're talking about from No Mercy 99 to WrestleMania 17. That's over a year and a half of putting faith in these three tag teams to carry the division. And yeah, if they weren't as good as they were, I wouldn't be sitting here talking about them. But they were. And we were fortunate fortunate enough to have them. But that's not to say, you know, there's not tag teams right now that aren't capable of doing the same thing. I really do think there are. I think there's a lot of tag teams in WWE that are capable of setting the tag team division on fire and it's just not working. I don't think they should have split the tag team division in the draft. When I was talking about the tag team division with people I knew and even on this, uh, this when I was talking about the draft, I should say, with people I knew, um, I always said that the tag team division should be exclusive to one brand and then they should have the women's division exclusive to one brand because then you don't split the rosters and then you have more depth to play with. And then, especially with the tag team division, if the tag team was, say, on SmackDown, you know, that's where you would go to get your tag team fix. That's where the tag teams go. The tag teams go to SmackDown because that's where the best tag teams are. Now, if you split the division, you got six tag teams on Raw, six tag teams on SmackDown. Only two are good on each one or two worth caring about on each one. It's hard to build a whole thing around not only just a small amount of tag teams, but in the back of your mind, we all know that the tag teams are split. So, like, let's say if they did that circa, you know, No Mercy, if they did a draft and Raw had Edge and Christian and the Hardys and SmackDown had the Dudleys. And then the SmackDown, Dudleys were the tag team champions and Edge and Christian were the Raw tag team champions. Who's better? Who do we care about more? Who excites us more when they come in as a tag team champion? Because in the back of your mind, you know, well, there's another guy, another team on next night that have championship belts too. So which one's more important? How do we find out who's the best tag team? We're going to have to wait till the next draft, and then they're going to mix everything up again, and then it's like, oh, we're just going to do the same thing again, but just now it's different people. you got to have them all together, especially with tag teams because, again, Part of the great storytelling that happens in tag teams are all the different players involved. You can have so many different styles within one match because instead of dealing with two people, you're dealing with four. Instead of doing a triple threat with just three people, you got six. That's so many. You know, even Matt and Jeff Hardy had different styles. Yeah, they were both extreme, but they had different styles. Edge and Christian had different styles. Devon and Bubba had different styles. You know, and I miss that. I miss that about the tag team division. You know, where it really was an emphasis on the wrestling. Like I said, NXT does it well. And I'm hoping that they're going to rebuild the tag team division again around the Hardys. I'm hoping that they look back at the success that happened with the Hardys and realize, oh, it's because we gave them a chance. Now we got to give these tag teams a chance. We got to give, you know, the Usos a chance. Jordan and Gable a chance. You know, we can't just slap a championship on them and call it a day. You know, oh, now the Usos are champions. Oh, now Jordan and Gable are champions. Yeah, okay, but what have they done? What have they done to get put in that position to earn it in the eyes of the wrestling fan? If the Hardys won that ladder match and it was for the championship right then and there, would it have been as important? 
when they won it again later or lost it and then Edge and Christian like that back and forth that started sooner no they waited they waited till we got close to the mania and then it mattered because now we understand what the stakes are you know that's that's how you build a tag team division you gotta keep raising the stakes and the Hardys are masters of that I hope we get broken Matt Hardy I hope we get brother Nero but if you want to look at other stuff outside of WWE Check out Supercard of Honor versus the Young Bucks. You know, the the Ring of Honor anniversary show between the Young Bucks, R Rapongi Vice, and the Hardys. Uh, some great matches in Impact Wrestling. The TLC match in Impact Wrestling comes to mind. They called it the, uh, what was it called? The Full Metal Mayhem between Richards, Eddie Edwards, and Team 3D. And then also TLC4, the Forgotten TLC, which is basically Benoit and Jericho against Hardy's Edge and Christian and the Dudleys so check those out so yeah we're continuing this path with the next tag team it's gonna be exciting it's great to be back I hope you enjoyed this video you know what to do like comment and subscribe you've been on YouTube before I am Be Better Gamer thank you for listening I hope you enjoyed it and until next time as always keep watching all the wrestling thank you <laughs>